he is a committed Brexiteer. Um, and Tom, let me leave you with a with a picture from here and a little bit of the atmosphere here. The, the, the optimism has certainly grown over the last five hours or so. Well, if you, there you have it. That is perhaps the picture of the night to date. Uh, they certainly think uh, they've got it. Uh, it is a quite extraordinary moment, uh, not just in tonight, uh, but in British history, uh, quite frankly. Um, very few people thought we'd be at this point, least of all David Cameron, uh, but we certainly are at this point in the evening. Uh, one place where they didn't particularly want to hear this news is the city. Joel is there. Uh, Joel, um, it's not been a pretty picture in terms of what they wanted to hear. Um, what's the reaction at this point in the evening? Uh, well, look, the markets have been incredibly volatile, Tom. The, the phones have been ringing in, clients have been placing orders, trying, obviously, to uh, make positions where they think you're going to make a bit of money uh, on this. This is all about, in this sense, having a bit of a flutter. But since we put up the probability, our assessment of the likely outcome uh, of the referendum, there has been another move in the market. Uh, we can see here that the, the price of gold has moved up. But this is the chart we really want to look at. This is the measure of the pound against the euro. As you can see, the early optimism for Remain uh, early in the day there. This is the Sunderland result, a sharp fall, another sharp fall when the odds seemed to suggest that the, the direction of travel was turning. There was a bounce after Wandsworth, but we've, we've seen the market fall again. The pound is down 5% uh, against the dollar. On the next chart here, against the euro, it's down 3.5%. The euro has also uh, fallen in value. Uh, and on the far side here, we can see this is the expectation. The London Stock Exchange, closed at the moment, will open at 8 o'clock this morning. The, the futures market is betting that that stock market, those the 100 companies, the total value of those 100 companies will uh, close down 5.5%. Let me show you one more thing, which is really interesting. ITV has called its probability odds the bookies. Now, you go back to 10 o'clock this evening, and here they are, Bet365, uh, Skybet, uh, Betfred, Paddy Power, Labbrooks, they're all here. Their odds, they were predicting very firmly the probability of a 75% uh, remain victory. Those odds have all gone into reverse. You can see one by one, all of them now offering odds on uh, for Britain to leave the European Union. I'm joined now by Joe Rundle, who's the head of trading here. This is quite a remarkable turnaround. No, this is. And actually, while we're on air here, we're seeing the pound make new lows. Um, and this is the market really waking up to the realisation that we are going to see probably now a leave uh, from the EU. And that is going to cause some significant issues tomorrow. Uh, the people watching... Joe, we'll just see lines on a screen. This will be impenetrable. They'll get the sense that the pound is moving. But put this in context, on an average day, how often do you see this? These are once in five-year, ten-year moves. The, the moves we are seeing here are moves that you would see over a whole month, and we're seeing these moves in a matter of seconds. And they're on the basis of polls, results coming out. But it now is the trend really does look like we are going to leave, and we are probably going to see more moves like this and bigger moves like this, and they're going to gather speed as it becomes more and more clear that we are going to see this leave. OK. Um, we heard an interview earlier between Robert Peston and Vince Cable, and Robert asked... Mr Cable, what he thought the uh, likely f reaction would be. And he said it would be a bloodbath if Britain votes to leave, a bloodbath on the financial markets. Is, is that what you're expecting? Yeah, I think now the markets are expecting that and we are beginning to see this. These moves, although, they, as you say, they're lines on a the screen, they are tantamount to bloodbath, to bloodbath. They are that big. And I think we'll probably see some more significant moves if this uh, momentum gathers speed for the rest of the evening. And then I think probably the medium term um, it's going to be significant moves and uncertainty on the stock market, the financial markets here. And this could become the new norm as we see uncertainty and new deals being put in place. So this could be bloodbath every day. OK, over your right shoulder, Joe, we can see that the FTSE future, FTSE 100, now expected to open down uh, 6%. For now, though, 
back to you in the studio. Joel, thank you very much uh, indeed. Well, let's just recap on what we're saying at this point in the evening. Uh, we believe our political scientists, Colin Rallings and Jane Greens and their team, Jane Green and their team, believe that there is now a 75% probability of, of a leave victory. That certainly isn't where we started this evening, but that is where we are at this point in the morning. Uh, let's go over to James Mates now in Brussels. Uh, James, uh, as we've talked about already this evening, this is absolutely not the message that European leaders wanted to hear, nor the one, frankly, that they expected. What do you think their reaction really is likely to be and their next moves when they wake up in the morning? Well, the next move, of course, is really not theirs. That's the interesting thing about this. The referendum is not legally binding as such in the sense that it doesn't trigger anything automatic. So they simply have to wait and see. If this turns out to be uh, what the result is, they simply have to wait, wait and see what the British government is going to do. Are they going to come to them and say, look, can we renegotiate? Well, Quite a lot of people have uh, uh, here have uh, ruled out that possibility because of the effect it would have on uh, on everybody else if Britain was seen to, to, to get its way in this way. Uh, are the British government going to come and say, oh, look, we've had this election, uh, this referendum, we voted to leave, we're leaving, we're going to trigger the leaving mechanism. Now, that's a, a very interesting thing. It, when the Lisbon Treaty about 10 years ago was negotiated, a lot of people, particularly in Britain, said, look, how can we carry on in this organisation, there's not even a way of getting out of it. So they said, all right, we'll write in a way of getting out of it. And they did. And they called it Article 50 of the Lisbon Treaty. And this is something uh, we are all going to hear a very great deal about uh, in the next few weeks and months, because that is the way uh, of getting out of the European Union. But what they must wait for here, the European Council, is for the British government or any member state to turn up and say, we now wish to trigger Article 50. It puts in, in place a two-year timetable, can be extended but is unlikely to be, at the end of which you are out whether you like it or not. In the meantime, and this is important, all the rules and laws of uh, the European Union continue to apply to Britain. Uh, as of tomorrow morning, we are still full members and will be until the very day we leave. James, for now, uh, thank you very much indeed. Well, let's just have a quick recap on the state of play, which you can see over my shoulder here. Uh, we have had um, 172 counts. Uh, leave is ahead. Uh, but as you've heard already, uh, our political scientists are pretty confident this is now a trend. We're putting uh, the probability of a Leave victory at 75%. Um, well, I am joined now by two people you will, I'm sure, all recognise. Uh, Liam Fox, uh, former uh, Defence Secretary, amongst many other things, uh, and Alistair Campbell, who I think, I think this stage in the morning, I can say, Honestly, needs no introduction. Um, well, here we are. Um, I guess the obvious question is what happens next? Liam, perhaps I could just begin with you. Um, you said that it wouldn't uh, economically damage us, certainly not in the medium term. They're talking about a bloodbath in the city overnight. Does that bother you or do you think that'll just play out? I think that's inevitable given that the expectation from the polls was that Remain would win and now the British public have taken a different view. There'll have to be a correction for that. I think more importantly is the political stability here. Uh, I think it's therefore essential uh, for David Cameron to continue as Prime Minister. I think that we need to get that political stability and continuity um, so that we have as little disruption as possible. But honestly, his credibility is shredded, isn't it? I mean, you know, I've followed David Cameron right from his early days. I've seen every, you know, rise and fall. He never, he never imagined that he'd be here tonight. Let's be honest, he didn't. And can he, I mean, whether he continues for three or four or five, I mean, do either of you think his credibility is up to another year or two in office? Well, I think, I think that's it's dependent upon the support he gets from his colleagues at Westminster. A, a lot of us had already written a letter for tonight. Mm. I actually went to see him a couple of weeks ago on this very point and said, if the Leave campaign wins the referendum, um, as the Prime Minister who brought us the referendum, you have a duty to see it through. And I think he's got a strong sense of duty and, and I hope that he will recognise that he will have the support of his colleagues if he chooses to do that. What, what, Alistair, what happens next? I mean, we, we are in uncharted territory here. You know, we've heard Robert talking about this is a moment in history. Well, it sure is, but we none of us can <laughs> accurately predict what happens next. I've heard it said that there should be a cross-party negotiating team sent, put together to work out. And what's your sense of the next few steps in this unprecedented well, territory? Well, first of all, we're going to get the whole result. And uh, as your analysis says, the trend is, is, <laughs> does look to be, to be heading towards a lead. But I don't think that's a given yet because mm. some of the big cities have still to vote.
Mm -hmm. um, but whatever happens, this is uncharted territory. Mm -hmm. I think even a Remain win now, uh, a, a small Remain win, I think throws up all sorts of really big political questions mm -hmm. in the air. So if it is leave, I think what happens next is that the there does seem to be this desire of the Conservative Party that David Cameron stays. Whether he can stomach that, I think, is a question. I suspect he probably would. Um, I think within the Labour Party, there are going to be all sorts of questions for the leadership. When you say questions, I mean, is Jeremy Corbyn well, finished as leader at this point? I, I don't think there's anybody who can seriously think that Jeremy Corbyn connected with so many of these people who have been lost. And we saw what happened in Scotland, and I think we're now seeing something similar in parts of the north of England. Uh, I think that the whole question of the union now comes into, in, 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 into, into view, because Scotland has voted, I think, in every... Do you every... think another referendum in Scotland is inevitable off the back of this? I think it's very likely. I think it's very likely, and I think in this mood that there appears to be about politics and politicians and the world, I could see them winning it. And then I think you're into all sorts of stuff. So I think within the European context, I think James is right. I think the Euro... And by the way, I don't think they'll be asleep. I think they'll be watching this. <laughs> no, I suspect they won't be and asleep, I yeah. and, I, and I think they'll... Be, I, I don't think they expected it. Um, I, I, I'll be honest, we, we were talking about this earlier. I, I've been slightly worried this is the direction it's been heading in for some time. Because when you do have such an overwhelming volume of opinion pushing in one direction, but it just wasn't pushing okay. the people well, back, pulling the people back, then you've got a really I big problem. I think everyone watching this, whichever way they voted, whatever mm. their view, is going to be thinking, oh, my God, sure. good or bad, what happens next? Because yeah. we are in uncharted territory. So let's just keep our eyes forward. I mean, do you think a referendum in Scotland, I mean, just as one possible uh, scenario, do you think that's, that you, would you agree that's inevitable? I don't, think there's, I don't think it's inevitable at all. I don't think there's any great desire amongst the Scottish people to go through yet another referendum process, mm. not least because the economics are even more mm. adverse now mm. than they were at the time when the last referendum was I think there is a strong held. desire to be in the European Union. Well, of course, th that they would have to weigh up the, the different mm. elements of that. I think the Scottish Government would have more trouble getting it. They lost their majority in the Scottish Parliament at the recent elections. Um, so I, I don't think that's inevitable at all. I think what, what people have not noticed tonight is, yeah. is, is the story of Wales. Mm. Uh, Wales overwhelmingly voting to leave. And this was coming. Those of us who campaigned, again, we were talking about this earlier, mm. campaigned in the Welsh elections uh, earlier on this year, you could feel it very, very strongly. Mm. And, and, and this referendum tonight is a little bit reminiscent of that general election last year, when those in the Westminster bubble mm. had one view of what was happening in the country. Those who were campaigning on the ground had a very different view. Mm. And I'm not at all surprised um, at the way this is panning out tonight. I think those of us who were campaigning round the country, outside London, could feel it. Mm. You've got the sovereign body in the United Kingdom, as we know, is Parliament. You've got an, a pretty overwhelmingly Europhile Parliament. Are you confident that, 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 that what happens next is, I don't even know the right word, but constitutionally logical or feasible? Well, does the Prime Minister go off and then come back and get a deal? And how does he know he's going to get it through Parliament? Well, he, just, well, he has to tell the, the, the European Council that this has happened. Well, they know, but he has to formally do that. And they theoretically do a deal and, they then, in private. They, we, we then, as it were, leave the room they, they, and the well, negotiation yeah. starts. But, the, but the, the, this is a very, very good point. Yeah. Because we don't yet know the result, no. like the final result, so let's not yeah. entirely pre No, no, I know. We, we need to keep putting caveats yes. in, but we'll, we'll come to that. But the question here is, um, just not a matter of whether MPs are Eurosceptic or Europhile, mm. are they Democrats? Because this well, yeah, is, but that's this not is the not question, a, is it? This because is not a consultation. Because we know what we voted against, but the number of things we voted... I mean, you could... Do we, are we certain we want to be out of the single... You know, we know we want to control our borders, but at the point of being out of the single market, that the, the, isn't clear. The, the thing that, that every member of Parliament who's watching the coverage tonight should be asking themselves is, um, do they think this was a consultation with the voters or was this an instruction from the voters? And in my view, it's the latter. And whether it's, whether it's re remain or leave... But an for what? It's, for it's, what exactly? If, if it's to well, remain, we remain. And if it's to leave, we leave the European Union. Mm. I, I don't and, see that as okay, being and, a very but, difficult but, point. But also within that, and within that process, which is now going to go on for years, there'll be all sorts of major moments in Parliament as all this gets unpicked. So I think you're right to raise the point about the... But, but what you're seeing essentially is a division, huge division between, if you like, the political class, the, 
the elites yeah. and the rest of the country. And all the parties have got to wise up to some of the messages now. Otherwise, this is going to get worse, not better. Okay, and, and a Liam. big difference between London and, and the, rest. the rest of that the country. That is certainly one of the stories. About. Liam Fox and Alistair Campbell, thank you uh, very much indeed. Whilst, while, whilst we were speaking there, uh, Jane and Colin and their teams were um, reviewing the probability, uh, and we have decided to push that up a, bit, uh, a little bit. And at this point in the evening, uh, we are now saying here on ITV that we think there is an 80% probability uh, of a leave win. Let me just repeat that, an 80% probability of a leave win. Clearly, we are in the territory of, of making history here tonight. Um, those of us who've been covering politics a while um, thought this might be the biggest night we'd ever covered, and certainly in the 26 years um, I've been with ITN, I've never seen anything uh, like this. We are, as I was discussing with Liam and with Alistair there, moving into uncharted territory. I think anyone who tells you they know what the next couple of weeks uh, is go are going to be like is possibly <laughs> stretching uh, the truth a bit. Uh, we've seen uh, references to a bloodbath in the city already. We've got no idea how long that will last. We've got no idea uh, what the medium term, let alone the long term impact of that is likely to be. Um, Allegra, maybe I can bring in you here. Here we are, 80% probability of a leave win. Uncharted territory doesn't even really begin to describe it, does it? So I want to just pick up on some of the things Alistair Campbell and Liam Fox said. I mean, firstly, uh, Campbell sounded like he thought there was a case for another election because he could see the logic that we were talking about with Steve mm. Hilton earlier, which yep. is that it's all very well and good to say you're listening to the British people, they want Brexit, but then if you don't agree with it on these tiny, tiny votes, there'll be all these occasions when people might want to vote against it and they can't. It's a zombie parliament, mm. so it has to be dissolved. Some people have been in touch with me just now to say probability of a, of an, a general election sometime 2017 because... These parties can't struggle well, on like this. Well, except the Tories won't want it, will they? The, the Tories party is largely Eurosceptic and they've got what they wanted, which is uh, a, a uh, clear uh, mandate to leave the European Union. They're not going to want to trigger another election, it, are they? Except you have the SNP in Parliament, you have Labour in Parliament. And so how do you get things through in this incredibly sticky period, which will be really fraught? I mean, we should say mm. there won't actually be anything... A lot will happen on the markets, but nothing happens... A, when Article 50 is triggered for two years, mm. and B, before that. And what the Brexiteers want to do is not trigger it for a heck of a long time. Mm. So there's this thing they're talking about, informal talks and then formal talks. But I just wanted to pick up on one yeah. other thing. Um, Campbell's suggesting, Alistair Campbell's suggesting um, he thought that, that there might now? be a, 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 another Scottish referendum and that that actually might be in this new mood. It might be more successful. Thanks. Liam Fox disagreeing. I slightly agree with Liam Fox that actually... Um, might not go for it. But anyway, there's some of the consequences that were brilliant. Well, well there's, uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff there. <laughs> Where would we even but start? I can, see, a, Robert I can see Robert Preston uh, in the corner. Into the studio. So, Robert, uh, perhaps you could come and uh, sit down and, and join this discussion about the uncharted territory that Four we're in. Four hours later. Four hours. I should say that <laughs> yeah. there are, of course, still caveats around this okay, probability. Let's inject some caveats. Oh, here we yeah, go. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's just worth saying that we've yeah. said that this is a probability, so it's not a certainty, and the caveats are that those areas that are yet to declare mm. are the kinds of areas we expect Remain to do well. Now, it's true that Remain needs to do much better, but we've seen a result from Edinburgh on a 72.9% turnout, a 48.9% majority for Remain. Leave are currently ahead by 400. 182,000 votes. Whatever happens, mm. it's definitely going to come down to the wire. Right. Well, it's very close, and let's. Uh, that would be another fascinating story of the night if Remain closed the gap and um, and brought us that, back. That's to what the... they're hoping. That's what they're texting yeah. in to say. They're desperately pinning their hopes on the Birmingham's, which is ginormous. Mm. Um, and as you say, Edinburgh now in Liverpool in earlier Cardiff. They're hoping for. That's what. That's what they're they're clinging on to. It's going to be recriminations, isn't it? Because it's going to be parts of the country that haven't delivered the Remain vote they were expected to, like Scotland. Yes. Parts Step forward, Mr Corbyn. Indeed. Parts of the country that are delivering massive, you know, leave votes. And if Remain do just edge ahead, there are going to be some... Well, they're going to be angry people on either side tonight. I, I, think, I think we've seen enough to be confident about two parts of the kingdom. However, the full result is coming from Northern Ireland yep. now. 55-45 for Remain. Mm -hmm. And as Liam Fox was pointing out, Leave doing very much better in Wales than was expected. We're only ex short of two or three results in Wales. Currently, it's 46 remain, 54 leave, and it's certain that leave are going to win in Wales. OK. Um, 
you'd expect social media to be alight at this point in the night with everything uh, so, so close and, and us uh, predicting a fairly high probability of a leave uh, victory. The trend may go the other way. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but anyway, let's see what Nina Hussain has got to say about it. I must just say, um, when uh, you first announced that probability, with the obvious caveats, of course, just to the left of me is uh, the green room for tonight's programme, where all our guests have congregated. And, you know, in comparison to the Leave campaign, where we heard those cheers and those shouts of out, there was silence in this room. And I have to say that silence hasn't really gone away. It's incredible to see so many political commentators and journalists not saying much at all. I think it's just the shock of what could be happening here tonight. Rob Owens is here with me from Twitter. And look at this map. I mean, we've been looking at this all night, but it's gone absolutely crazy. This is the number of conversations happening right now talking about the EU. Well, yeah, this is a time lapse that shows the number of tweets sent. So this was from the start, from, poll from the moment the polls closed for the last couple of hours. And it just shows about 5% of tweets because most tweets aren't geolocated. So these are only the ones that people have actually chosen to have their tweets geolocated. So there's 95% more that we can't show you. And what we're seeing is all across Europe, there's a huge conversation going on right now as people listen to the kind of news that you're breaking about your prediction of 75%, potentially looking for Brexit, that it may be they're going to have to wake up to a new shape Europe in the next yeah, couple of years. Yeah, that's gone up to 80% now. Let's also uh, look at the, the rest of the world and whether, you know, obviously key interests there in the, in the United States. Yeah, so these are tweets about the EU referendum and you can see that all across the world, all across the globe, this was that big burst you saw just then was when the polls closed and we first started to get the results in. And what you're seeing is all across the world, especially Commonwealth countries and our big trading partners, there's a huge amount of interest in what's going to happen for, uh, for the UK and for Europe. Rob, thank you. I'm also joined by two guests from the Green Room, Sunder Katwala, uh, journalist, and Alan Rennick from UCL. Thank you uh, for talking to me. In terms of that moment of the prediction, the probability of 75% now, 80%, I mean, it was just silence, wasn't it, here? Yes, and I think you see Remain's chances of victory narrowing and, in my view, vanishing fast. They're still clinging on to some hopes, but we're seeing a, a tale of four different nations here. Remain ahead in London, uh, ahead in Scotland, has won in Northern Ireland, but that's it, getting hammered across Wales outside um, Cardiff and losing in all of the English regions. And they're hoping the cities will save them, but they've lost Sheffield and they're losing in places across England that they would need to win in. Worcester Woman has voted for leave. Watford has voted to leave. So I think the chances that the cities in London will save them looks like it's slipping away. We are still talking about a probability, not a result. But if that result matches that probability, why did people not see this coming, especially the pollsters once again? Well, the, the, the pollsters will have to explain what happened in terms of the methodology, but there was an eerily calm last three days. The markets have gone into meltdown now. They've mm. been very, very quiet on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday because the, the voting, looked, the polls looked very narrow, actually, very even, but mm. the markets and the pundits decided that probably Remain had won and that this was, this was a non-dramatic night. This actually looks like a very historic night. Alan, very quickly, if, 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 what happens next? Well, there's only one thing that we can say with certainty, which is that we will not leave the European Union immediately. It's going to take a very long time. So next, the Prime Minister will come out with an announcement uh, in a few, uh, few hours' time where, where he'll say whether he's going to stay, for how long, and also he'll say something about the timetable, how quickly he's going to move in order to start the negotiations on the process of Brexit. OK, Alan Sunder. Thank you very much, Tom. Nina, thank you very much. Um, well, let's just take stock uh, at this point in the evening because whilst Nina was talking there, we were discussing around the desk um, just exactly what's going to happen over the next few weeks. Robert, um, why don't you kick off with an, a, a summary of uh, what you reckon is actually going to happen over the next week or two? Well, I mean, if we are right, um, and I have complete confidence in our colleagues that we are right, that the likelihood is that sticking we are... Sticking another caveat there, because um, it could go the other way, but let's um, just go on on yeah, this trend. I don't think it's very likely. Um, that we are, you know, about to witness a vote in favour of leaving the EU. Um, we are going to see uh, extraordinary events in the coming hours and weeks and months, but let's just look at tomorrow, OK? So tomorrow we will see a fall in the value of the pound greater than probably anything we've witnessed, certainly since we tumbled 
out of the exchange rate mechanism back in the early 90s. Um, we will see share prices fall very sharply, not just here, uh, probably all over the world and certainly in the European Union. We will see the euro weakening because questions will be raised about the survivability of the European Union in these circumstances. I would expect the Bank of England to talk about the measures that it is taking to make sure that banks have enough finance. We will I'd be staggered if we don't see a statement from the Governor of the Bank of England uh, talking about the measures that the bank will be taking to make sure that the financial system remains safe, that people's money remains safe, and that as far as they can, that growth in the economy is sustained. Uh, we will hear from the Chancellor uh, about the work that the Treasury has done, the contingency measures that the Treasury will have been working on uh, to make sure that financial institutions and the economy are kept going in these circumstances. And I think we will... I mean, we've had this letter from uh, the Leave Tory MPs say, not much and ministers <laughs> that, uh, that, pledged, <laughs> that pledged allegiance to the yeah. Prime Minister. I just think, I don't know, Allegra will have her view. I cannot see how the Prime Minister can tomorrow say that he is going to stay in office more than a few weeks when the biggest political decision that he has ever taken will have gone, in his terms, so spectacularly wrong. He said to the people of Britain that it would be catastrophic for them to vote to leave the EU, and they have ignored him. His authority has been, okay. many would say, fatally undermined. I don't honestly see how he would survive OK, that. Let's, let's, let's flip that over to Allegra for a moment, because I, I, even as we speak, even as Robert was talking there, I was trying to get my head around the political <laughs> uh, ramifications of this, and I can't say headache. that I'm finding it that easy. It's okay. gonna be, I mean, on a whole, but we, we've, we've, we've got to talk about the possibility that Scotland has another referendum and decides to leave the European yep. Union, so we, uh, leave the United Kingdom, so we're talking about two dissolutions, potentially. You've also got this, you know, I don't know whether this is a parliament in which any other business is going to get done. I mean, realistically... Well, I how long is this parliament lasting? Well, I, d I don't know, but... but, but is nothing it else possible to... I mean, this to... is why somebody like yeah. Liz Truss, the um, Environment Secretary, was quite brexit -y and decided to vote to remain because she felt if this happened, and she's written about this, yeah. it would dominate everything. But, I mean, to my mind, that's slightly trite because... This is now a huge... This is a huge piece of statecraft. Okay. This is, you know, you're not going to get anything through on social mobility. But, look, what, 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 what's going to happen? I, I agree with you, Robert. I think I can't see how the Prime Minister will... What, he will be crushed. He will be broken. He will be in tears, probably, right now. He deeply didn't want this to happen. Um, but don't you agree, everything we know about him, he is a public servant and he will feel he has to get that lectern, go out into Downing Street at 7, 8, whatever, tomorrow and make a statement okay. to the country. Well, he, I'm, I'm sure he will. I just want to inject at this point in the evening, let's go to Julie. Let's just remind ourselves that although we think the probability has crept up, uh, it is not true to say uh, that Remain have yet lost this. And Jane was just talking a moment ago about the possibility that there are enough places left, right, that if Remain did better than we think, but they the have trend to, could still reverse. They have to start doing much better. They have to start doing much better, but it's still theoretically you, possible. We've just a, had Manchester. OK. Where Manchester Remain has won 60-40, which is, again, at the lower end of... Okay. What they'd expect to be their on so, trend. So, so you would have expected Manchester to be more like 63, 64, something right. like that. Okay. This is a good moment to go to Julie and say, Julie, are they still keeping the candle alight there? Are they still thinking that it's possible at this stage in the evening? Um, I'm uh, Tom, alongside me now is uh, Will Straw, the uh, campaign manager for Remain. It goes quiet for long spells now, with the occasional cheer for places like Hackney, Will. What's your reaction to what we seem to be seeing unfolding? Well, it's been a tale of two countries this evening, I think, with uh, obviously Scotland, London, other big cities like Manchester just declared for Remain, but of course large parts of England and Wales 
uh, for, uh, for leave, Northern Ireland for, for Remain as well. So uh, I think very divided country this evening. Um, there, there are still a number of results still to come, uh, but obviously... Uh, you can't ever have dreamt you might be in this position, though. Well, last week we were seven points behind in the polls, so uh, I think we were uh, certainly contemplating this, uh, this happening. And um, for much of the last five years, uh, there's been a significant need for leave uh, in questions about whether we want to stay or, or leave the EU. So we've always known what a big challenge this was to win this referendum. Uh, and, uh, and of course, you know, there have been um, some uh, issues along the way as well uh, in terms of how individual political parties have, uh, have campaigned. But I think at the okay, moment... So, so it is that still... sounds like you're start starting to possibly apportion some blame. What do you mean no, by no, that? No, no, I don't think it's, um, it's time for that at all. Um, well, what, what, what potentially went wrong with this campaign? Well, we don't know what the result is yet. There's still uh, results to come in. Well, I think let's look at that in the, in the morning. What, um, what we need to do now is wait for the final results to come in. And then I think uh, if um, whatever the result now, reflect on what has happened uh, in, in the UK uh, with this vote, because whether it's a narrow leave win or a narrow remain win, uh, this is a country that has um, voted in vastly different ways in different parts of the country. And I think um, people, uh, politicians, will have to come together and think very carefully. And about your, your labour to your fingertips, of course. <laughs> red Prince, mm -hmm. uh, a, a well-known Red Prince within the Labour Party. What are you hearing from...